Hey boo, hey, welcome back to Firm Foundation. We are reading James chapter three. Now I'm gonna make a quick disclaimer. As you have been hearing in previous versions or previous videos, the kids are, it's just a little bit wild over here and we're just gonna let it do what it's gonna do. But I want to make the disclaimer that my kids are probably gonna bum rush me at some point. So we're gonna be Bible studying with the kids. We're gonna try to make this quick and to the point, but you know how it goes. Anyway, today we're reading James chapter three. Let me pray. Father God, we just thank you for perseverance. Lord, sometimes things happen and the enemy is trying to attack us and keep us from your purpose, keep us from doing what you have called us to. And we ask for the strength and the endurance to press through in spite of. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we pray that whatever it is that we're supposed to receive today, that we receive it with open hearts. Lord, we ask that you convict us, that you teach us, that you show us our hearts and expose us to what it is we need to learn within your word. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Let's get into James chapter three. Now, another note to make is that I've been wanting to show you my Bible, show you like what notes I've been taking and all that kind of stuff. But the way that my cameras have been acting with no storage and one camera today decided not to charge, there's just been too much going on. So we're going to read the word. We still going to get the word and I'm just going to talk us through what's happening here. I think I'm going to do a blog post so that you can see like a screenshot maybe of my notes inside my Bible. So chapter three, verse one, not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. I love this verse right here, this, this verse, because it really shows that with leadership or as a leader, you hold a great responsibility. And so James is basically saying here, like, hey, listen, teachers, like we, okay, he's now shifting. So if you if you think about chapter one and chapter two, in chapter one, he was talking to the entire collective, right? Um, and, and now he has switched over to talking specifically to teachers, leaders, pastors, things like that. And so I love how he said, Says, you know, um, not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. So to what is it to whom much is given much is required it's that same energy right here verse two for we all stumble in many ways and if anyone does not stumble in what he says he is a perfect man able also to bridle his whole body and bridle just means to control so what he's saying is listen if you are that perfect that you don't stumble you don't do anything wrong then in that case you are mature you are perfect but we all know there is no one that's that perfect right the only perfect man that has ever lived lived has been Jesus Christ himself. All right, girl, I'm hot because my hair is in my face. Anyway, verse three, if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. So right here, James is telling us there's power in the tongue, right? There's power in the words that we say and that our tongue, what we say, changes what happens around us, right? It changes where we go. And I love this. I love how he gives the example of the ship. He gives the example of the horses, right? Because he's basically showing like where, what your mouth speaks, where, what you're thinking, it directs where your body goes. So if you're thinking sinful thoughts, you're eventually going to, your body is going to follow into that path, right? In chapter one, was it chapter one? Yeah, in chapter one, we talked about the cause and effect of sin, of temptation, right? Remember in chapter one, verse 12 through 15, we talked about how um, being tempted by our own desires leads forth to us actually committing the sin. And so here he's confirming that. In chapter three, he's confirming like, I already told you that you're going to be tempted by your own desires. Now he's showing us that by what we speak, by what we say, by what we think, that will then direct how we act right? It will shift how we act and it will control where we go. And we all know there's life and death in the power of our tongue. We know all these things about how powerful our tongue is. And he's also showing our tongue is such a small thing, right? It's such a small part of our body, but it has a big and grave impact. So the rest of verse five says, how great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life. And set on fire by hell for every kind of beast 
and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind but no human being can tame the tongue it is a restless evil full of deadly poison so i have to stop here and say like my a reflection that i made when i was reading this is that we are often more scarred from the words that are said than anything else someone does right like a lot of times we can endure so many things but the things that people say those are the things that cut us deep and we have to be mindful also on the things that we are saying because you never know how your words can affect someone else but also your words just affecting yourself right again he's he's telling us to bridle to control to guard our tongues and he's also saying to us like listen i know that you can't like no human being can really actually tame the tongue i still feel like this is a warning to us a reminder like hey you have to be on guard you have to be mindful of the things you say and then i love what he's getting ready to go into next so verse nine it says we've been bum rushed so we're gonna go back and start with verse eight. It says, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. And so I love what James is trying to say here because essentially James is like calling people out for double speaking right on one note you are blessing the Lord you are praising God you're doing all these things and then out of the same mouth you are cussing people out you are cursing people you are gossiping and speaking ill on people right and James is like yo how like how is this how can you do this and this goes back to his point that he made in verse 8 of our tongue is a restless evil full of deadly poison because literally we are scarring people with our words with our mouth the same mouth that we use to pray, praise god and it's like that's so double-minded right that's so that's that's double speaking verse 13 who is wise and understanding among you by his good conduct let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom so here he's about to give us the solution for controlling our tongue which is to seek wisdom okay so he told us like listen i know you can't control your tongue i know that this is an area of struggle for you i know that you know you're going to be praising god and cursing people and gossiping out of that same tongue but here is how we are going to break this here's how we're going to overcome this so the solution is to seek wisdom so verse 13 who is wise and understanding among you by his good conduct let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast and be false to the truth this is not the wisdom that comes down from above but it's earthly unspiritual demonic for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist there will be disorder in every vile practice but the wisdom from above is first pure and what pure here means is free from defilement so but the wisdom from above is first pure then peaceable gentle open to reason full of mercy and good fruits impartial and sincere and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace and i love this last section verses 17 and 18 because it really speaks to the fact that if it is of the lord it will bring you peace right and it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy but it kind of makes me think of that whole peace that surpasses all understanding it's like this doesn't really make any sense but i feel peace about it and this is what james is speaking to in verse 17 and 18. so in verse 17 he is essentially saying to us that wisdom from god right wisdom from above it is pure it is free from defilement it is there is no negativity there's no evil desire behind it right it is first pure and then it is gentle right it is um peaceful right that that's when you experience a peace you experience peace when you have more wisdom because you're able to navigate a situation way better and as a result of this wisdom you then gain a harvest of righteousness right and you get to receive that peace that you are desiring i love this last little section because it really just kind of shifts it gives you a solution to a problem that was presented right james is telling us we can't you can't tame your tongue you're up here cussing and fussing and praising god at the same time you can't you can't control that but what you can do is you can seek wisdom right you can seek control over your tongue by asking for wisdom and through that you will receive a peace so it's time for me to mom, but this was great. I will see you in chapter four.